We love to do things for the kids here at the Studio Gardens, and I'm at our children's rainbow garden, and this is in one of our ground beds, and it's very interesting, the design, and of course the volunteers helped design and put this one in. And I know I've been preaching on this for quite some time now, but in the rainbow garden, you're seeing an impact once again from the cool, wet spring. And the impatience that you're seeing now are actually to depict the colors of a rainbow and the design of a rainbow. But obviously you notice that one side is a little bit taller than the other one. And the reason for that, the tall side has actually gotten a little bit more sun and dried out a little bit more and warmed up more during all that cool wet weather, which has actually increased its growth. The other side has been too cool, too damp for impatience because of the shade and so it's a little bit stunning. Now obviously there's a little bit of cultivar variety difference too, but I think as the summer goes on now that it's run out, you're gonna see the reverse. The ones under the shade will probably perform better because remember, impatience prefer shade. You'll even notice the ones out more in the sunlight now are starting to wilt, so they'll probably stunt and burn on us and we'll see again the re reverse. But it's a nice idea and I think as the summer goes on and now it's drying out, it's gonna work out for us. But in addition to the impatience forming the rainbow, you'll also see that we have pretty much a painting. We've got the sunlight, which is depicted by the marigolds, a little bit of blue sky, and the plant we're using is blue days for that. And then we have an assortment of plants that have rainbow in the name. We have everything from rainbow coleus to rainbow lantana, rainbow status, and even rainbow tomatoes. And then, of course, to keep guard over our rainbow garden is a life-sized pot person that's also watching over that pot of gold. But now, what I was doing here is I'm actually pruning some petunias, which happens to be our clouds in the painting, and we have both double and single white petunias, and they really give us a nice, nice puffy appearance for clouds but they're also getting a little bit too tall. And if you have this problem in your landscape, don't be afraid to cut them back. Once they start reaching 12, 15, 18 inches tall, just go ahead and trim them back about halfway. Try to clean out as much of the trimmings as possible. And then that's a good time to come in with a, a low rate of a water soluble fertilizer because you can water them and put the fertilizer on at the same time and push them along. And hopefully you'll get a little bit more growth out of them as well. Now the thing about a garden like this is even though we came up with a theme and we have the design and everything, remember you always put the right plant in the right location and that's why we've tried to put the impatiens more in the shade, the petunias out more in the sunlight which they prefer, and then of course we have the tomatoes, marigolds, and coleus that are scattered out again pretty much in full sun. However, remember coleus actually prefers partial shade so you'll see that more kind of on the borderline. Now with the variety of coleus that we're using, it's the old traditional variety, it sends up seed pods quite often. And so what we have to do is trim those out or deadhead them and that gets quite to be a problem. But I encourage you to stick around this summer because we're gonna show you some new and improved varieties of lantan and coleus that's really gonna catch your attention for the hot summer. And be sure and stop by the gardens this year and bring the kids to our Rainbow Children's Garden.